to tonight's game. This one promises to be a good one between the Montana Grizzlies and the Central Michigan Chippewas. And, of course, here's our starting lineup. I'll tell you one thing. How they start the game is very important and will sometimes dictate how the game is played. Number 21 is a player who can handle playing under any pressure situation. He's a star player that we'll keep our eyes on tonight. He's a complete package. He seems to have a knack for coming up with the big plays when his team needs them, be it a bucket or a stop. He delivers. The Grizzlies will undeniably have their hands full trying to put a stop to his contributions tonight, Dick. Tries for two. Belay it. Number five, Both teams looking to get things going here. And there's a lazy pass. It's stolen away. Turnover. Will it turn into two the other way? Look at this phone. Coast to coast. Nobody stops the ball. I mean, he just has an open lane, man. You can go that truck from here. We have a backcourt violation. Mistakes like that can add up in games like this. He up fakes. Pull up jumper left side. The Grizzlies will step to the line for the first time. Gets the first shot. Got them both. Oh, he drained it. That's a nylon MBN. Number 40 is charged with the foul. Oh, and you can see the frustration as he picks up the foul. Oh, that's a bad, bad foul right there, Brad. Looking to move it around the perimeter. Lots of room. That's an ill-advised shot. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. Goes up for two. Number 24 is called for the defensive foul. He goes to the line for the first time. First shot is good. Second shot, no good. A three-prong attack tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brad Nestler with Dick Vitale and our friend EA. Aaron Andrews checking in from the sideline. Dumps it in. For the bucket. Up and in. Looked there like he was trying to avoid the foul, Dick. But you can't avoid playing D. They get it out into transition. They come away with a basket off the break. Back it up, back it up. We'll see that one again. Now they work it around the perimeter. Great composure to pass it despite the trap, right? Great elevator man, man. That's the elevator guy. What a high riser. Eludes the trap there as the chance persists. Who says there's no such thing as a home court advantage? Off the mark. He's got a nice shot fake. Number five receives the pass. Hmm, that's not a good shot given his abilities. I don't think the coach wants him taking that shot. The center gets the ball with the catch. Nice execution on the spin. A great spin move to the basket. Long down court pass. He tries the jumper. And it's in and out. And there's what the game tempo is looking like tonight. Hey, Brad, that doesn't surprise me. The pace has been quite hectic. First half update again, Dick Vitale, in your opinion, our focus player, what do you think he's doing so far? I'll tell you, Brad, he's playing well, but his teammates have to really elevate their game. He has elevated his. He's showing why he's a PT here. The shooting guard takes the feed. On the dribble, gives it up. Takes the jumper. He has taken his team completely out of this game. These young guys have to remember to let the game come to you. Don't force the action. Gave it up for two. Dick, you think they're going to stay this hot? Hey, 
doesn't look like they're slowing down, my friend. He launches a three. How many bricks have we seen? Will somebody make a jump shot, please? Working it around the perimeter. Great pass out of the trap, Rod. Ten on the shot clock. He cleans the glass. Well, here's a look at the tempo for both teams tonight, Dick. You know, it's crucial, Brad, that both teams stick to their style of play. If not, the chances of them winning number definitely four, decreases. Four, three, three. On the dribble, gives it up. Pushing in transition. Shot clock is dead. Gave it up. He attempts the three. Too strong. He doesn't get the hoop to call. At the end of the first half, the Grizzlies are ahead by two. They'll inbound on the near sideline. Our focus player update, Dick Vitale, going into the second half. What does he need to do, do you think? Well, I think they got to get him the ball right away and have him attack the basket. I think he's got to be able to become much more aggressive on the offensive side. Off the rim and no good. Number five is whistled for the foul. First personal foul. We talk about team styles all the time, Dick. What do half-court teams look to do? This style really calls for heading players who typically play fundamentally sound, team-oriented basketball. All play styles play team basketball. However, half-court teams rely more on their teammates to score and defend. Kicks it out. Tries for two. The land. Well, let's check in with Aaron Andrews and what she's got in store for us, Aaron. The Grizzlies did a great job in the first half limiting turnovers. This is something that Dick mentioned as a point of emphasis. They've avoided risky and low percentage plays. We'd all agree that this has made the difference so far. Watch for the sound offensive play to continue in the second half. Guys? Thanks, Aaron. Shots off the mark. Passes it out of the trap. On the dribble, gives it up. A little two-man action. Escape the trap. Isolated on the outside. They work it around the arc, looking for the open jumper. Ten on the shot clock. Up and in. Top of the circle, they work it around the perimeter. Goes for the deep one. The chanting continues. Who says there's no such thing as a home court advantage? Number five takes the pass. Kicks it out. Number 41 is called for the foul. First personal foul. Number 10 makes his first substitution. I'll tell you what I like about him, Brad. He brings all kinds of energy to the floor. Let's check in courtside with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? Brad, despite his performance, he has been unable to get his teammates all on the same page. There's a lot of confusion and lack of focus down here right by the bench. He continues to stress to them, relax, play your game. He can't do this alone, Brad. That's, of course, Aaron Andrews, our correspondent on the sideline. Start comparing these backcourts, Dick. What are your impressions so far? You know, well, for me, Brad, good guard play will take you a long way. If you think about teams in the past, they all have good guards who can apply good ball pressure, attack off the dribble, and distribute the ball. I can't emphasize enough how important backcourt play is. The Grizzlies have a special roster, which I know you're in love with. Dick. Well, their roster is pretty special, Brad. You know why? Because of the seniors, the leaders, the dependable ones. They're so important. That's 
definitely not the shot they were looking for, Dick. Hey, Brad, their shot selection has been questionable. Too many outside jumpers. They've got to attack inside and then out. Let's check in with Erin Andrews and what she's got in store for us, Erin. Well, it's quite obvious that the coaching staff wants their team to slow down the tempo. I can hear him on the sideline talking to his bench players about being patient and running sets. He wants the defense to break down first before settling for a shot. Unless, of course, it's a layup. Guys? Aaron Andrews always close to the action. Trying to come up with a steal, and they do. Here they go into transition. And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with the block shot. Wins out. The power forward takes the feed. There it is, Jam City. Right now his team in front by two. For the bucket. Dick, are they being taken out of their game offensively? Hey, they're taking themselves out of the game by rushing bad shots and not executing on offense. Point guard takes the feed. Number five picks up the foul. Fourth team foul. Great defense. It's a two-point game. The fans are going to make it even tougher, Brad. You didn't expect them to quiet down, did you, Dick? Gave it up. He launches a three. He gets the bucket to fall. It's a one-point game. One point usually means free throws, Brad. They're working around the arc. Harm and foul. I think the shots seem to be running for him right now. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. They're dropping, and you better have good productivity out of your front court. When you have that balance inside outside, you got a great chance to win. And you have to have post players that are going to make big plays. Well, it's time to start fouling. They got to stop the clock, Dick. And they continue to foul to stop the clock. Sometimes a stat that gets lost, Dick, turnovers, and that can kill you in a ball game. I tell you, turnovers can absolutely destroy a team's performance. If you give teams easy baskets, you got no shot to win. And the ball goes out of play. Timeout's been called. Let's check in with Aaron. Well, guys, this is a great opportunity for the coaches to calm their teams down. With this much time remaining, they're stressing play smart basketball and take care of the ball. Coaches are expected to win, and obviously this makes the profession that much more stressful. As a coach, you're always expected to do well. But when you're depending on other people to deliver, namely student athletes, it's a bit more stressful. That's why preparation is the key. Coaches have to ensure that their teams are prepared. It's all about playing your team style. Do you have any final thoughts? Every game there's a plan, Brad. If you execute the game plan, you usually win. Occasionally, you'll play a better team, and they'll just beat you because they're more skilled. However, with a solid game plan and the ability to play your team style, anything can happen. Thanks, Richard. It's all about playing your team style, and time and time again, that's what it comes down to. I don't know about you, Dick, but I think today's Pontiac game-changing performance was obvious out there on the court. Montana narrowly comes away with a win. They kept it close and ended up pulling off an upset. It's been a fun game, and as always, my partners alongside have enjoyed you.